Do you ever come across a video, but you're not quite sure how much useful information is actually within it? I've run into this constantly, and I find that it's a core challenge with long form audio and video, like podcasts and webinars. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use AI to determine if that video is actually worth watching. Recently, Sean Blanc, whose content I love by the way, was hosting a live writing workshop, but at the last minute I had an important work meeting that I just couldn't miss. Luckily, Sean made the webinar available after the fact, so I opened the video for that webinar to see that it was 55 minutes long. Sean's a great host, so he had plenty of audience participation, which is excellent when you're watching it live, but really slows down the pace when watching it back. So the core question was, how could I find out what Sean actually talked about that was meaningful without having to sift through a 55 minute video. So I broke out Mac Whisper and went to work. If you're not yet familiar with Mac Whisper, it's an app for the Mac that packages up OpenAI's Whisper transcription engine into an easy to use GUI. I could obviously install Whisper via the command line, but why do that when Mac Whisper makes it so easy? The first thing we need is a video file to pass to Mac Whisper. From Mac Whisper, we're gonna convert this video into a transcript so that we can have AI analyze it. Once we have that file, we can drop it into Mac Whisper and it'll begin to transcribe it. This is gonna take a bit, but is significantly faster than actually sifting through the video. Now that we have our transcript, we need to pick a large language model to use. Most people know about ChatGPT and it's excellent. But something that I've found is that ChatGPT has a limited context buffer, meaning the amount of content it can consume is limited. If we try to pass it this 55 minute transcript, it's gonna say that it's too much information and that it can't handle it. And that's where Claude comes into play. Not only does it have a large context buffer, but it also allows you to upload files as context, which is pretty handy. Let's pass it the transcript from this video and ask it to summarize it. All right, so let's go over to this webinar and we can see the webinar here. Let's go ahead and open developer tools and let's look at the elements. If we inspect this element, we'll see that it's just an image until you start playing. And so let's play, let's scrub through a little bit uh, and, and you'll see that it gets replaced with the video. If we continue to spin that open, we'll find the actual video source and we can copy that. If we load that in a new tab, it's gonna load up and then now we just need to save it. So I just went up to file, save page as. It's gonna detect that it's a video format and it's an MP4 file. I've already got it downloaded, so let's just hop over there. Let's go ahead and open up Mac Whisper and give this a go. So as you open Mac Whisper, it'll let you just drag a file in here. So let's go in and do so. And now it's gonna start converting. So in this case, what Mac Whisper is doing is it's converting the file into a format it can understand. And I think you can understand MP4s natively. And now it's transcribing all of that content. And this is gonna take a little while. I'm gonna fast forward through this part, but I'm gonna try and keep how long it actually took so that you'll have it. So for context, that transcription took three and a half minutes on a M2 MacBook Pro for a 55 minute video file. So your mileage may vary, but I didn't think it was too bad. Now all we need to do is export this file out so that we can pass it along to our large language model. By default, you can go full transcripts. I personally like speaker paragraphs, but I don't think the large language model is really gonna care one way or the other. So let's export that out. It's gonna drop it as a plain text file, which any of our large language models will be able to handle the contents of. So let's go ahead and save that. In this case, I've already saved it, so we're good to go. Let's go over to Claude. All right, let's start a new chat. So let's attach a file. We can attach that sentence-based file. We're gonna ask it, what are the key points from this document? And let's see what it does. All right, so it's saying that writing has four main steps, ideas, developing, and writing editing and then publishing, and that breaking it down this way makes writing less intimidating. After watching back Sean's workshop, I do think that this was a key idea from it. Being organized as a writer involves knowing what you're writing about ahead of time, scheduling time to write, and having a routine to start writing sessions smoothly. Overthinking and procrastinating often happens when writing alone without accountability, and that community helps provide motivation and accountability. Having actually watched Sean's talk, I think this was pretty good. John, if you're watching, would love to know your thoughts on whether these are the key points. Let's uh, try one other thing. So I'm gonna ask it to just summarize the document and see how that's different. I should probably throw a please in here. AI is gonna run the world one day and I don't want them upset with me. I think the summary is okay. I tend to actually gravitate more to the key points. Let's maybe ask it to dig further into the key points. Let's get some more details. Hmm. 
this dual focus piece is something I've been really having trouble with lately. So glad he talked about it. I think this is pretty good. Having watched the video back, I do think that these are the key parts. Let's crank it up a notch. Let's see if it can actually help me find where to go back to in the video to watch it. So to do that, we need to go get timestamps. So let's go back to Mac Whisper. And instead of exporting out speaker paragraphs, we can export out this BTT format, which will have the timestamps to go with each sentence. Let's export that out. Again, I've already done that. And let's pass that over to Claude in a new conversation. Where's my VTT? Yeah, here we go. This is the VTT file. It's gonna by default export with a .VTT file format. You just need to rename it. Let's go ahead and open that up. What timestamps from this video, from this transcript, should I go back and watch? Ooh, it didn't like that. Let's try that again. I broke it. Oh, here it goes. It says at the eight minute mark, Sean discusses the four parts of the writing process, what, when, where, and how, and explains why it's important to break writing down into separate steps. Let's go check that. So I think I have this video somewhere. What did it say? Eight, basically nine minute mark. Let's see. So problem number one is most people, when they think, oh, writing, we think of it as just one big box. Like it's one textual questions. It's actually pretty good. All right. Also, Sean breaks down the four key parts of writing workflow in more detail with ideas, developing, editing, and publishing. Okay. Let's try that out. 20 minutes, 21 seconds. Low state um, as quickly as possible. So now let's talk about organization and how to have a system that fills and fits your writing process. So this slide kind of matches the, the other slide, even though we're moving on to a different uh, segment. It's actually pretty good. I did this test earlier and I didn't trust the timestamps, but so far so good. Let's, let's try one more. Sean talks about the importance of scheduling your writing time at 29 minutes, 30 seconds. Whatever it is, and we're sharing our process and sharing the progress that we're doing. And that accountability in the community component uh, is so valuable in helping us to get over all of the overthinking that comes into play on step two there and step three. I mean, I'll, I'll give it partial credit for this last one. I think he does reference that, but maybe not perfectly. Let's go to 39 minutes. Uh, the startup and shutdown routines and how it's made a real difference. So, Sophie, this is great. I'm actually doing a dedicated. It was really good. All right, I stand corrected. I didn't trust the timestamps after doing this the first time, but the second time Claude actually did an excellent job with that. So I'd say as long as you check behind it, it's actually pretty good. I'd like to send a big thank you to Sean Blanc for putting on the writing workshop. I found it incredibly helpful. To Jordy Bruin for putting together Mac Whisper. And as always, I'd love to hear about your experiences thus far with AI down in the comments. If this video was helpful or made you think, give it a like and subscribe so that you don't miss out on my future experiments. Until next time, cheers.